All right, Algebra 1. This is Lesson 9.6, Exponential Functions. So, oops, got to select a pen. There we go. 9.6, Exponential Functions. Sorry, hold on a second. When I write the first line at the very top, I have a hard time with my hand not, you know, getting in the way. All right, Exponential functions. Then once I'm away from the top lines, usually just fine. All right, so what's going on with an exponential function is the variable x is in the exponent. That's what's going on. So if we write a generic form of one, here's what it could look like. It could look like this, like y equals a times b to the x. And that B, it might be in parentheses, it might not, okay? And we'll, we'll see it both ways. So I'm going to do without the parentheses right now. So we have A times B to the X. I'm going to add this plus K that we'll talk about here in just a second. Okay. And there are a couple requirements for this. A couple requirements. First of all, A cannot be zero. Because if A is zero then you know, if a is 0, 0 times whatever b to the x is, that's going to be 0. So this entire chunk here will just become 0, in which case you're left with y equals whatever value k takes. So if k is 1, you'd just be left with y equals 1. Or if k is negative 3, you'd just be left with y equals negative 3. And that's just a horizontal line, which is a linear function, because it's a line, not an exponential function. So that's one requirement is... Let me erase this red stuff here, is A cannot be 0. Another requirement is B must be greater than 0. B must be greater than 0. Um, and that just has to deal with, so X being our variable, we're, we're going to look at like the graph of like when X is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, when X is 10, 11, 12, 13, when X takes on all these different values, when X is negative 4, negative 3, neg you know, all these different values of X. Well, just really, really weird stuff starts to happen when you have a base here, B, that is a negative number and you're raising it to the power. Like we know, okay, well, negative negative 2 squared, well, we know what that is, right? So if x is 2, if b is negative 2, so for example, if b is negative 2, and you're looking at, well, how about when x is 2? Well, that would be, then you'd have a negative 2 squared. Well, what is that? It's negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4. But how about instead of x is 2, x is 3? Well, there you get negative 2 cubed, well, that's negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4, times another negative 2, which gives you negative 8. So we've switched from a positive number to a negative number, but then when x is 4, we're going to switch back to a positive number, and our y value is going to be switching back and forth and back and forth between positive and negative when x is an integer, like 1, 2, 3, etc. But what about when x is like 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4? And the gist of what's going on there is you're constantly switching back and forth, not just between positive and negative numbers, but also between real and imaginary numbers. And we haven't gotten much into imaginary numbers. But all of that to say, you need B to be a positive number in order for this to behave nicely, in order for it to be an exponential function. Okay? Um, yeah. And... and what we have here is we get what's either called exponential growth or exponential decay. Okay. And so I could say growth versus decay, and we'll look at a couple examples. So we have growth, exponential growth, and then exponential decay. And exponential growth, if you graph it, it's going to have a general shape, like it starts out really gradual, and it gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. It's going to be kind of like that. Okay, It grows more and more as time goes on. Think of it like if you had, if you had one object, and you doubled how much you have. You know, have two. 
But then if you double it again, you now have four. If you double it again, you have eight. If you double it again, you have 16. Each time you double, the amount that you add goes up. You're adding more each time. So like from one to two, we added one. From two to four, we added two. From four to eight, we added four. From eight to 16, we added eight. And um, so the amount is increasing more and more as time goes on. That's like... Um, there was uh, a mathematician way back in the day, I want to say it was Archimedes, who was uh, agreeing to solve some problem for you know, like some local monarch. And, uh, and the king was like, how do you want me to pay you? And, and Archimedes was like, well, let, how about we take a chessboard and you give me one grain of sand on the one square, and then... On the second square, put two grains of, sorry, not, not sand, grains of wheat, one grain of wheat. And then on the second square, put two grains of wheat. And then on the third square, double it. So each square that you fill, put twice as many grains of wheat. And the king was like, well, that's it. That seems like hardly any payment. Okay, sure. But then when they actually started to look at what that would be, you know, if you double each time, you, you're ultimately multiplying by two times time, sorry, by two to the power of 64, which they realize, oh, that will actually bankrupt the entire kingdom because that much wheat is like more than we could ever get our hands on. We have to you spend all of the kingdom's money to get that much wheat because of the rate, the nature of exponential growth. Anyway, exponential decay, it works like this. It works the opposite. And it gets more and more horizontal as you go on. So growth starts out almost horizontal over here, almost horizontal. And then it increases more and more. Decay starts out really steep on the left, and it becomes almost horizontal as you go to the right. So as far as the equation is concerned, what does the growth versus decay? Well, you get growth if... Oh, black pen, if... B is greater than 1. If that base there, if that base there is something greater than 1, when you raise it to higher and higher powers of x, you're going to get bigger and bigger values. Okay? And then we already said that B cannot be negative. B has to be greater than 0. So decay here happens when 0, sorry, when 0 is less than B is less than 1. Or in other words, if what you're dealing with is something between 0 and 1, so like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, 1 half, 7 eighths, 1 fifth, any fraction or decimal that is between 0 and 1 will give you exponential decay. All right? So that still leaves the, the question of what does the A do and what does the K do? Well, the A we've already seen in uh, looking at our quadratics is that A deals with vertically stretching or compressing. So we could say vertical, vertical stretch. If A is greater than one, or it's a vertical compress, compression, Compression, if 0 is less than A is less than 1, in other words, if A is between 0 and 1, let me fix that, it's supposed to be an A, is starting to look more like a 9, okay? Uh, we could also add, we could also add if we have a negative A, that is a vertical reflection, but I don't think I gave you anything dealing with vertical reflections, but it should be hopefully something that you remember. Sorry, my page just, whoa, I actually bumped something. I really zoomed in. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, and then the one thing we can add now is what this K does. Okay. So what the K does is it translates translates 
vertically. And that's also the same thing we saw with the parabolas. So as you add values here to the end, okay, so this k here, if you're adding 3, it translates the graph up 3 units. If you're subtracting 5, it translates the graph down 5 units. Okay, so it translates vertically. All right. So let's look at some graphs because we haven't quite looked at we've looked at here we looked at the overall shape but we haven't looked at exactly what's happening where okay so let's look at our parent function our parent function of growth is going to be y equals 2 to the x Again, maybe you'll see that the 2 is in parentheses. Oftentimes, if it's just a number to the x, it's um, it'll be done without the parentheses. 2 to the x. Or it's an integer to the x, maybe I should say. All right, well, we don't explicitly see an a or a k value here. So what does that mean? Well, it means you could say technically we have y equals 1 times 2 to the x plus 0. So in other words, a, a is 1, and k is 0. In other words, we are not stretching this vertically, and we, you know, stretching or compressing, and we also are not translating. Okay? All right. So then what we see is if we made a little table of values, just to kind of figure things out, let's just say we have, all right, so we have our x values here, we have our y values here. Let's look at like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. We'll look at those values. All right, so going back to the equation, we have when x is negative 2, we have y equals 2 to the negative 2 power. Now, you might recall that a number to the negative 2 power is the same thing as 1 over the number to the positive 2 power. In other words, 2 to the negative 2 power is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power, because the nature of negative exponents. We looked at that earlier in the year. Well, what's 1 over 2 squared? That's 1 over 4. So y here is one fourth. Okay, when x is negative one, that's our we have y equals two to the negative one, two to the negative one. Same thing as one over two to the first. That's one half. Then y equals two to the zeroth power. Anything to the zeroth power is one. Now it gets a bit easy. We have y equals two to the first. That's two. Y equals two squared. That's four. Y equals two cubed. That's eight. So when we go to plot these, sorry, I got a little more crooked than what I wanted it to be. See if I can do a little bit better here. Okay, we go to plot these, x-axis, y-axis, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we have 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, when x is negative 2, y is 1 fourth. That's like way, I'm, I'm going to go blue here. That's like barely above the axis. That's even more like 1 half. I, I can't even get it low enough to, to really work there at this scale. So I got to do it really, 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 really low, like right there. All right, then when x is negative 1, y is 1 half. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. When x is 3, y is 8. So we connect the dots and approximate, and we get something like that. And there's our exponential growth shape. Okay? Now, one thing to note, the y-intercept. The y-intercept, notice... The graph is crossing the y-axis at a y-value of 1. 
Okay, so we can say our y int here is 1. And something else to note, as you go farther to the left, as you go farther to the left, the x, the, the, the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never going to touch the x-axis because the x-axis has a y value of 0. And when you are going farther and farther negative, what you're doing is like, if x is negative 10, then your graph, your y value is y equals 1 over 2 to the 10th. When x is negative 50, your y value is 1 over 2 to the 50th. And you're getting closer and closer to a y value of 0 as you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger denominators, but you never can get exactly 0. And there's this mathematical term that we haven't started to use yet, but um, it is, the, the word is... The word is asymptote, M-P-T-O-T-E, asymptote. And an asymptote is a line that your graph gets closer and closer and closer to without touching or crossing. And in this case, the y, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, the x-axis serves as the asymptote. That as you go farther and farther to the left, the graph gets closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it doesn't touch it or cross it, meaning the x-axis here is functioning as an asymptote of the graph. Now, if we shift the graph up or down, it shifts where the asymptote is. And we can also look at what happens with the vertical stretching and whatnot. So let's look at an example like, let's look at like y equals 3 times 2 to the x um, plus 2. Okay, so what is this 3 doing? This 3 is vertically stretching it. Vertically stretches. I'll say vertically, oops, I left the h off. Vertically stretch, T-C-H, what am I doing? Sorry, I got my letters mixed up. Huh. Vertically stretches. And then what does this do? This vertically translates up two units. Okay, so now what we can do, um, I will, yeah, all right, we'll say this. So let's make my axes, I'm going to make this like that, okay. Now my parent graph goes through the y-axis at 1, but there are two things going on here. Now I'll give you kind of a little formula here. Y intercept is A plus K. Take the vertical stretch factor, A, in this case it's 3, plus the, uh, what am I trying to say? Plus the vertical translation amount, and that's where it crosses the Y axis. So this one, what do we have? We have the y-intercept across the y-axis. Oops, sorry, that was a three times, okay? A is three, k is two, what is that? Five. So this graph is going to cross the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna cross the y-axis here at five. And then what is this vertical translation going to do? it is going to translate where our asymptote is. So asymptote, I'll say horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. It is a horizontal line at whatever k is. So in this case, k is two. So what I can do is I can do a little dashed line here at 2, 
and this serves as the as like the ground of my graph where everything is going to happen above it because there's no reflecting going on. So what I can do at this point is I can make my graph get closer and closer, start out close to the asymptote, and then it comes up, crosses there, and it goes steep. And that is good enough for these, um, where we're just approximating the key things of what's going on. So it goes up forever to the left, getting closer and closer to the asymptote, crosses the y-axis at five, and then it goes steeper and steeper from there, okay? So we've looked at graphing one of these. Let's look at one where we have decay going on. What do we have decay going on? So let's say like we're dealing with y equals one half to the x minus four. All right. So what do we know? We know, what is a here? A, well, a is an understood one because it's what's out in front of whatever the number is is being raised to the power of x. So a is an understood one. So a is 1. And we also know that k is negative 4. Okay, so what's my y-intercept? My y-intercept is a plus k. So that's 1 plus a negative 4. What is that in this case? That gives me a negative 3. So I'm going to cross the y-axis at negative 3. And then what is the horizontal asymptote? What is serving as kind of the, the ground of my function? That is this k value of negative 4. And I also know it is decay. Let's see, I'll also say asymptote. I'm going to do h dot a for horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote is at negative 4. And then because I have a 1 half to the x, that's something between 0 and 1, that tells me that this is decay. So it's going to start steep on the left-hand side, and then it's going to level off on the right-hand side. So I put those different pieces together. I have my y-axis, my x-axis, arrowheads, labels, and I already said that I cross the y-axis at negative 3, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that's where I'm going to cross the axis. I have a horizontal asymptote at negative 4. I'm going to do a little, oops, I'm using blue here for my graph. Horizontal asymptote here at negative 4. That asymptote goes on forever, so I'm going to do arrowheads there. And then I need it to be k. I need it to be dk. So it's going to start steep, it's going to cross there, and it's going to level off, getting closer and closer to, but not crossing the asymptote. And that would be that graph. Okay, that's that. And I, you have some questions that are like identify the way that a graph is a modification or, um, or how it relates to the parent function. That would be using you know, words like translated vertically up to, or it's vertically stretched by a factor of four, or vertically compressed by a factor of one half, that kind of stuff. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about that. The last thing that I can think of is to look at um, how to tell from a table of values if something is exponential or not. So let's see. So that would be like this. If a function is exponential... And here's what you can see. For every difference, now for every, oh no, let me put it this way. If x's are changing, yeah, I'll put it that way. Sorry. If x's are changing, by a common difference, y's will be changing 
by a common ratio. I'm sorry, ratio. So here's what we mean by that. I need to add another page here. Um, so I need to go there and here and insert new pages and I just need one more. All right, so here's what we mean by that. So we'll say determine if exponential. Determine if exponential, and here's our table of values. We'll say x is on the top row, y is on the bottom row. And I'm going to say we have 2, 4, 6, 8. And then that we have, just one second, and then that we have, I'm going to go... Um, one, three, nine, 27. Let's say we have that. All right, so what I look at here is I see if there's a, if my x's are increasing at a common difference, what that means is I add, if like I do the third x value minus the second one, or the fourth x value minus the third. That's why we use the, the term difference. But basically, you could also look at it as, what do you have to add to get from one x value to the next? Well, from 2 to 4, what are we doing? We're adding 2. From 4 to 6, what are we doing? We're adding 2. From 6 to 8, what are we doing? We're adding 2. So there's a common difference between each subsequent x value that we have here. Now, what we look at now is to see if there's a common ratio. In other words, is there a common value that we are multiplying to get to the next x value? Sorry, to get to the next y value. Well, from 1 to 3, what do you multiply by? You're multiplying by 3. From 3 to 9, you're multiplying by 3. From 9 to 27, you're multiplying by 3. So because the common difference in x's correlates to a common ratio of y's, then we can say that, um, yes, this is exponential. So for the set of homework questions that are like this, um, how you could word this, yeah, ratio or factor is an okay word to use here. Ratio or factor, I almost used that before. Either one works okay. So is this exponential? We could say yes. Yes. Why? The x's are at regular intervals. In other words, the gap between them is two each time. So the x's are at regular intervals and the y's have a common factor. We could put it like that. In other words, each time you jump up a certain x value, you are jumping up a certain multiple of y values. Okay? And maybe one more example like that, and I think that'll do it for this lesson. So x's, y's, and let's get a few of these here. Let's just say we have, uh, let's say we have negative 1, 2, 5, 8. And then uh, let's say we have 2, 6, 12, 15. Okay, so let's see what we got. Do we have a common difference in our x values that we're given? Well, let's see. To get from there to there, we're going to add 3. To get from here to here, we're going to add 3. To get from here to here, we're going to add 3. So we, have a, we do have a, a common interval of x's. Um, let's see what's happening with our y's. To get from here to here, we have to multiply by 3. But to get from here to here, we have to multiply by 2. And I could honestly stop there. 
because I don't have the same factor happening each time. All right. To get from here to here, what am I multiplying by? One and a fourth, 1.25. Okay. So we do not have the same. All right. So I could say, no, this is not exponential. Why? Well, I could say the x's are at regular intervals. And the y's do not have a common factor. Okay? All right. That should cover it. Let me know if you have any questions. You know, that can be a, if, if you get some of this done, what's today? Today's Tuesday. If you get some of this done on Wednesday, then you can hop on Thursday and ask some questions um, before having to submit on Friday. Okay. Hope things are going well, and I will see you next time. Bye.